Would I consider Lil Wayne a gangster? Or even rapper? better yet, question: Would you consider the Hot Boys his group? Would you consider them a gangster rap group? I would consider at the time that they was representing their neighborhood and mm-hmm. they was like some hood rapping niggas. Yeah, definitely. For sure. But Lil Wayne transitioned out of that to become, you know. <sighs> I look at Lil Wayne's era like I look at, like I look at a Kendrick now. You get mm-hmm. me? Oh, I never symbolized Kendrick as a gangster rapper. Oh no, no! I think um, Kendrick had the perfect idea when he said he's a vocalist. Yeah. You know, he was he had visions of doing other. Sh- you know, even though he spoke on situations where growing up in the hood, you know, caught his vision. But, you know, same thing with Lil Wayne, you know. Lil Wayne didn't just rap about, you know, poverty-stricken growing up in the projects and shit. Lil Wayne has songs like Lollipop and shit like that. You get me? Yeah. So, do you consider his presence, you know, coming up? Being a neighborhood nigga? Yeah, I would give him that. Because he definitely, you know what, he definitely be Sue Whooping. I mean, yeah, he was claiming blood and all and that. I, you know what, dog? But, like I said, as his transition went from coming from the hot boys and going through that blood era and Sue whooping and all that, you know, to making songs like, you get me, Lollipop and, and songs of that nature, I would consider him just, you know, an, uh, an achieved artist as far as just sticking to the script of all I'm going to talk about is Holly Grove and blood this and Sue whoop that and whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's only as, it's only as far as you can take that shit. Well, you know what? One thing I will say about Wayne, I know people got a habit, especially on the internet, of saying, oh, this dude ain't real, this dude ain't that. When I was down there in New Orleans and we was at a club, um, Ross was there that night. It was during, um, it was when they had the um, All-Star Week down in New Orleans. When I tell you that Wayne probably had about 70, 80 dudes out there from his neighborhood just waiting, there was really niggas that was, looked like bloods to me. They was really out there and they really greeted that nigga, dapped them up, they had the handshake. So we can't be so quick to say the motherfuckers is necessarily phony. They represent from where they from. You know what I mean? No, I don't. I, don't, I guess people get that, that, try to get that analogy of saying um, phony because. <sighs> Everybody considers, you know, the West Coast is the land of of the originators, uh, Crippin' Blood. I mean, you know, just like when you think of New York, you know, they started hip hop. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you look at Crippin' and Blood and you look at L.A., yeah, that's where it came from. So... When you get clicks and crews and people started, you know, claiming and doing that shit outside of the boundaries of where it started from, I mean, same shit. We used to get criticized when we started rapping on the West Coast. You mm-hmm. hear me? Nobody played our music. Yeah. East Coast radio wouldn't touch our shit. Yeah, you for know? real. And they went with the South either. It's just, it's... Niggas believe in what they believe in where they from. Now, you can't call a nigga phony because he ain't from Compton or L.A. or he ain't from California banging because, like you said, when you go down to New Orleans, we take our serious down here, too. Well, it was definitely bound to happen because you, when you start talking about places like New Orleans, um, Baton Rouge, um, Detroit, Flint, Chicago, those are places that's very active in the streets as well. So it was just definitely bound to happen, you know, to where gangster rap I mean, would just yeah, infiltrate, yeah, it, you know what I mean? It infiltrated to the fact, like like I said, mo- niggas have always had clicks and crews, you know what I'm saying? They was Holly Grove, or we was, you know, wherever we from, we started banging. We had to color rags and whatever, whatever. Now, when I used to take summer vacation trips to New Orleans and Mississippi as a six, seven-year-old, did I see niggas standing on corners with red rags and blue rags and shit? Mm. I never saw that shit. But, like you said, transitions. Niggas get identities, and they feel... We going to start our own shit, you get me? We we not the we wasn't the bangers of the 60s and 70s, you get me? 
We didn't wear leather coats and leather, you know, fedoras and leather kangos and represent like that. Niggas started wearing khaki suits and T-shirts and Cortez shoes. That was mm-hmm. our transition. Not to say that that's like you said, it ain't going to happen nowhere. It, it, it's going to pick up. Niggas going to go the younger generation like, yeah, we going to be these niggas now and f- it. We gonna start wearing red bandanas around. Hell yeah, because even in me? even in the UK they had their own version. United it, Kingdom, it, it, when you go over there, they had the grime stuff that was kind of like the get, street stuff. Then you get my to say, oh, them niggas ain't real, them niggas ain't. But you can't question that realness because I'll guarantee you, I've had plenty of places where I've been that where I've like, yeah, whatever. And then I'm. 3,000 miles up in the snow somewhere, woonty woomp, and niggas is pulling up in red hats and red bandanas, and I'm looking like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not that, you know, you got to be safe and niggas, you know, wherever, but it's like you said, just the transition of it. You think that this is not going to fluctuate to other motherfucking places, but niggas change in transition. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to be the nigga that you know, was banging in my grandfather days, nor am I going to be the nigga who was banging in my father days. I'm going to mm-hmm. be the nigga banging in my era. You get me? Mm-hmm. And that's how the transition go. Niggas from other places start adapting. You get, you get me? Yeah, we called the we called Samson Projects, but we're going to symbolize we're wearing red now. You get mm-hmm. me? We just not gonna be the this nigga wearing purple and this nigga wearing green and he got on some black and that nigga got on an Atlanta hat and that nigga got on a LA hat and that nah. We gonna symbolize everything now with the color red so everybody know when they come to the Samson block, mm-hmm. we wear red. Now, <laughs> some niggas might not even be saying they bloods, right? Mm-hmm. But we gonna symbolize this section with red. And that's, that's gonna be the color. color. And that's we be don't have to color. be the Samson Street Bloods, right? Mm-hmm. We just gonna be Samson boys, but we're gonna recognize with the red bandanas. And then over there, they've been beefing, right? Mm-hmm. They've been beefing with the Boulder boys. Mm-hmm. So the Boulder boys gonna decide, oh, them niggas are starting to wear red. We gonna start wearing blue, or we gonna start wearing green. Yeah, man. The thing is, it's like this. You know what, man? I just had a question come in for you, eight. Make sure I got this right. You had a show in Tucson, Arizona, right? Right. And it was a bunch of bloods there. Yeah. What happened with that? <sighs> When I start touring, you know, like I said, you don't know what's where. We just crip niggas. We are, we, that's what we are. We crip niggas. So we go on tours and I go on tour, naturally we representing wherever the we go. But when you go to different towns and different cities, I'm not knowledgeable on what's what. I had no idea Tucson was a, a, a blood city. And they was deep. Oh, I'm talking about the whole, the whole, um, we performed at a, like a, we performed at something like a, what, what, what I could compare it to? Probably about 2,000 people. Oh, so this is a big club. It wasn't even a club. It was like a theater. Okay, kind of you know, like um, you know the curtains uh-huh. and the stage. So it was a bigger version of like said, you know, like you go to a college uh-huh. auditorium and it's so it's like that and it's people. So this is at a real theater. Yes. So, and I was on a promo tour with the label, so it was it was it was Sony representatives there, and because uh, I was doing the promo tour. So, you know, you go to different, you hit a different town every night. Mm. So, I had all the homies with me, the regulars, chill, bam, all of them, whatever. And um, when we get to the venue, you know, I'm noticing while we getting out the van in the parking lot, you know, I'm seeing a lot of red, you know. 
It's probably around 93. Seeing a lot of red. I don't pay no attention because we've I've dealt with that. You get me? I've dealt with going to places and it's a few blood homies there and you know they 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 hit you with their rags and they signs and but by now I'm considering myself a professional, even though mm-hmm. I'm still hood. Nigga, I gotta get this money and, and do it. You're not show. tripping, you're gonna go do a show. And then I'm like, this all these motherfuckers done paid their money. So it, it it's filled to capacity. So we go out there, we do the show, you know, yeah, it's I mean it's full. It's it's a house full of full of bloods. Um but I get on stage. I still do my performance. Nothing happened while we was on stage. You get me? Nobody threw nothing. You know, you had a few dudes, you know, hitting us up or whatever. But in all in all, they were still jamming to the music. They were still, you know, whatever. And then uh, when it was time to leave, uh, they got the shooting at the back door when it was time to leave. They got the shooting at the back door? Yeah. They tried to rush the back door where we was coming out of. And then so uh, one of the homies pulled out a pistol and we were shooting back, trying to make it to the van. That's crazy, man. You know what? Um, Quick and High C and them had a similar story down in um, Texas. I think to where a cat had lost his life. Croft told me about that story. He said, and it tripped him out because he said the dude that got killed out there, he was a fan. And he was excited about being at the show. He just got an autograph from Crawford and Quick. You know, he was happy. Mm-hmm. And then he said that f***ed him up to look over like 30 minutes later and see homeboy stretched out on the ground. He said he said it f***ed him up. So you definitely got to be careful because I think sometimes when you go to these places... You just have to know your surroundings, you know. Usually we pick up on stuff like that quick, you know, of, of knowing, you know, where you at. And like I said... um, Show must go on. Uh, the label motherfuckers, they not knowing. You get me? They, they thought it was like, a great show, didn't they? They just like, hey, it's time to perform. Mm-hmm. They're not understanding the, you know, they're not understanding the seriousness behind. Like, this ain't, you no, know, this ain't nothing to play with. Like, somebody could really lose their life tonight. So... I mean, it came with the territory because of once I started making records, you get me, I still wanted to symbolize with being from the neighborhood. So Mm -hmm. everything was blue, videos, everything, stage, everything. So it wasn't like, wasn't like I was having to yell crip on records and shit. Mm. You know, and be like, I'm from here and I'm from there. But you know, fans take sides sometimes, eh? Well, fans already knew. Yeah, I mean, so that that was the dis that was the disadvantage right then because, like I said, growing up in Compton and, and you know, in in being compartmentalized in 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 just that area, like mm-hmm. I didn't used to go nowhere. Mm-hmm. I was just in Compton. My only thing was going on family, you know, trips every other year to Mississippi. And that was it. Outside of that, I didn't know what the f*** was going on with the gang banging world. So as I started maturing and I got into this, you know, oh, it's bloods over here. It's crips over here. Crips over there. Bloods over there. Bloods over there. But then, like you said, this is venturing out. So... We pull it up in Phoenix. Okay. Now you starting to, as I'm starting to make repeated rounds every year. Okay, Phoenix, they got Bloods. Over here, they got Crips. Up in here, they got Crips. Utah, they got Crips. Over here, and oh, they got Bloods. This city, they got Bloods. So you just start trying to navigate. Yeah, you know what? One of the things I was going to tell you, man, was this during that time you and Quick had your little situation? Yeah, this was during that time. So mm-hmm. you could already, you know. Because like I say, if fans be trying to take sides. Fans yeah. are going to take sides, especially mm-hmm. when they game banging fans. Mm-hmm. Now, it wasn't to say that blood niggas wasn't buying CMW records, mm-hmm. but still, 
when it came to representing their their cause. Yeah, like I said, I I went to Milwaukee to do an in store and about twenty blood show up to get autographs and it wasn't even tripping. Oh, they was tripping because they was trying to have me sign the autographs and putting you know. What what Crips didn't write, you get me back then. And back then, I considered myself still to be in... Uh, yeah, you was still in full gangbang mode. Exactly. <laughs> so, it was, a t- it, was a, it was a touchy situation because them as fans watching videos and, you know, hearing the beefs and shit like that, they already knew what we was about because we showed up, you know. Mm. They, everybody got out the van in all blue. And now you in a town where everybody trying to be bloods, so they come to the sign-in, you know, they want to stand in there and think you're intimidated, but, you know, you these niggas from California, so... It's, it's it's a touch and go situation, but yeah, we got out of most situations. We left without any um, because I, even though even though we was representing, I still looked at it like we were out of bounds. Mm-hmm. So before we just start taking off on niggas, we just gonna be cool and shut the fuck up and get the fuck back in the van and get back home. That's how I always looked at it. I never looked at it like we got to show these niggas that what that California like and won't they want. I I always looked at it like I got six, seven niggas with me on the road and we all need to get back to Compton. Mm -hmm. So before we just start banging on niggas and whatever, whatever. Bing. Nah, I'll sign your autograph. I ain't going to do that, but. All good. Good looking, homie. Good looking for coming out. Good looking for buying the tape. And it's like, at that point, a motherfucker got to bite their tongue. Because it's like, okay, so what do we do now? Because they're not they're not tripping. You get me? Mm-hmm. I don't know what the aspect of was. Yeah, we're going to go up here. And if they get to tripping, we're going to get to tripping. And these niggas probably got pistols in the car and shit. So what you do is you cater to the motherfucking bullshit. Oh, no, it's all good, homie. Yeah, we know where we at. It's all good. Good looking. Here your autograph. Here you are. Can we take a picture with you? Oh, yeah, no problem. They want to throw up their blood signs and all that. Um, It's all good. Yeah, for real. And you know what's a trip, you man. You got to learn how to play this game, man, especially when it's entertainment shit. And, you know, like I said, when you got other people's lives on your hands, you know, you just got to approach shit differently. <laughs> Pinocchio, we gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Extra 